We thank you, Jesus. 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 We thank you. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your mercy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I welcome you, our viewers, our PBB members, and even our friends who are elsewhere within this globe. We welcome you now to this uh, Tuesday Bible Study Fellowship that uh, we are going to study the Word of God together and that we're going to work together so that we can get to learn and to be freed and be transformed by the Word of God. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you for taking time, even in your busy schedule, I know you are at home, and it's a joy that uh, you've created this time for us to study the Word of God. I welcome you, this is a PBB Ministries, and uh, our vision is to see transformed nations and their leaders through the uh, working of the Holy Spirit and through prayer, that is for us to do, and God has given this, as, this assignment and this vision that came through our dear evangelist, Evangelist Lucewa Gojiri. 
I know you know her. Ni mumu dikagiriria. You watch her on Facebook also live and even on YouTube. And she is the one who started this ministry by what God gave her. We are here to support and we thank God for the vision that church, that God, that God gave her for her now to be doing the work that God has has now brought in even now me as the husband because you would not even actually have seen me I would not even have been known anywhere it was only that God through his grace and mercy that he has done that through my dear wife that I love so much and I thank God for her I thank you also our viewers because without you and even sharing this word it would be pointless if there would be nobody who is going to receive this word I thank God for you God is good and God is love. God loves you and so do I. So let's start uh, our study today and I want us to pray and I thank God for you. Heavenly Father we thank you. We give you praise for loving us. Thank you for all that you have given us in Christ Jesus. I thank you even as you have given us this opportunity to study your word that Lord we have every, every blessing that comes from you. You have given us all that we need for life and godliness through your word. And it's through knowledge of you and of Jesus Christ. I say thank you for all that you have done. Help us by the power of the Holy Spirit that we are going to get the understanding and the revelation, knowledge of your word, that your wisdom that you have already granted us. We are going to apply it in everything that we get to learn and understand. Because when we apply your word and do as you have commanded us to do, not for us to get you to move, because you have already moved by grace, but for us to enjoy every benefit that is there for us. I thank you, Father, for loving us. I thank you for the gift of life that we have now, the tree of life that we feed on. We feed on you, our Lord Jesus, that, Lord, we are going to continue enjoying every promise that you have given unto us let uh, let our hearts and we believe that lord we are going to allow this we allow our hearts to get all these principles that are there in the bible that we are going to apply them in our lives in our everyday walk of life so that we can have the abundant life that jesus came to give we honor you and we adore you because you're good god in jesus name can we all say amen amen and amen and amen thank you so much now we know uh, who we are and why we are here and we thank God uh, for you, our viewers. And I want us to just uh, reflect back. You relax wherever you are. Uh, just relax wherever you are, where you're watching us from. And you can also send uh, some messages so that we can get to know where you are. And we can get to know where you are. And if you have any questions, as we said the other time, just post them and we'll be able to address them as we continue this study. I want us to go back again to what we had last week. And let me start by saying this. Last week was my first time uh, to be uh, on, uh, on a video like this, where I don't have a congregation. Uh, my congregation is you, the viewer, and yet I cannot see you. I'm just seeing the camera and the cameraman here. And uh, it wasn't uh, something that is always so easy because I'm used to having the congregation. And it is a joy. And I thank God for his grace and enabled me to go through all that. And I enjoyed it. And as I'm also sharing the word, as I'm teaching what God has revealed to me, and as we walk together, I'm also feeding on the same word. I'm also being transformed by the same word. And I thank God. We all are supposed to renew our minds and we be transformed by God's word and be conformed to the image of Christ. That's God's will for us. So that we can walk in this life victoriously. We need to ask ourselves these questions. Why is it that we don't enjoy the victory that Jesus has already won for us? Why should we walk defeated? Yet, the victory has already been won for us. God is good and God is faithful. So uh, allow me so that as we, can, as we continue in this, I want us to focus on and even reflect back on uh, the, the teachings that we had previously. I know God uses his own people. God uses people. 
because he can't come here because he is spirit. And God is using me now at this time, at this moment. There are many others, of course, who are teaching the word of God. I'm not the only one. But God uses his people. He uses his word. When he use, we use his word, then his word now works in us and through us. So that you, who especially if you are there and you don't believe, then you get to hear God speaking to you, God calling you, so that you can allow the Spirit of God and receive Him into your heart, so that you can be renewed and you can also be transformed, so that you accept Christ and you have the Spirit of God in you and you walk in this truth. There is victory in this. There is joy in abundance that has been given unto us. Now, I want us to go back again to what we studied. I know we had this study. I'm especially focusing on the on our PBB members because uh, when we had our pastors in church and we had the fellowship together, we focused on, on the, this issue where we are saying that we should not be blaming God because our topic that time, and actually we have been continuing in this, was that we should not blame God for what we are going through at this moment. The coronavirus is not from God, so we should not blame God on that. And we continue that saying that God is good and God is love. He's not the one who is actually bringing these sicknesses and diseases and the viruses. They don't come from him. This is something that we need to focus on and believe and see that it is not the judgment of God. If you remember, we read this scripture that was in, uh, in, in, my, in uh, John 12, verse 47 to 48. We are not going to read it now. You can go and study it because we are not going to have so much time. This is going to be very brief. We said we're going to have at least 45 minutes of this. And then when, when we get to meet again, even on Tuesday, we'll continue with this study. We read that scripture, that we are not on judge, under any judgment. We should not have that in our minds. We should not allow that because it's for us to see that God is not judging us. Why did Jesus come? What was the purpose of him coming? We said that we are in the day of salvation. This is the grace period. We are under the covenant of grace at this time. And this is the day of salvation. It's not the day of judgment. Judgment will come for those who don't believe. And there is a day of judgment. Right now, we are not in that day. So, have that in your mind. So that you don't allow the thoughts that are coming from other people who do not have these truths to get into your heart. You have to guard your heart through what you are hearing, what you are reading, what you are seeing even on the news and the social media. Don't allow anything just to get into your heart. We need to change that so that we focus on the truth and only allow the truth to be in our hearts. And when you do this, this transformation, as we are being conformed to the image of Christ, this transformation takes place effortlessly from the inside of you. It does not depend on us. It is the Spirit of God who changes us. When we have the Spirit of God in us, then we know that this transformation, as we are studying, as we are believing the Word, as we are digesting this Word, as we are meditating on God's Word, we know this change, this transformation is taking place. How it is done, we do not know and we cannot be able to tell. But we have to believe it, so that once we believe it and we continue speaking on it and meditating on this, change is coming. And within no time, you will see that change taking place in your life. I am a testimony to that. And I know that you too can have the same kind of testimony. God has no favorites and he only does what he already gave us through his word. So it's not about us. Uh, begging God to do this or that. We'll look into that. Let me not get into that right now. So, we were reflecting on what we had the other time. The previous teaching that we had, we said that Jesus came, because we said this, we are not under judgment. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. That is 1 John 3.8. You can go and study that again. I said this, that we don't have to get so many scriptures into our head if we are not walking in that truth. I would rather you meditate on one scripture, on one teaching, and walk with it so that you get that as part of your everyday walk of life. God cannot tell us to do something. He knows that we cannot. He knows that we are able to do this. So, 
let's reflect back so that we can actually work together and see. And as we are working together in this, you will realize it is out of that relationship that, that is being built, that fellowship, we already have the relationship, it's a fellowship that we are actually now in, uh, uh, continuing to build up so that this fellowship as we fellowship with God, because relationship we already have. Once you receive Christ Jesus, you have the relationship with God through the bloodline of what Jesus did through the cross. Once you receive him, you have the relationship. The fellowship now is what we need to work on. And it's what we need to be working in so that we can come to God fearlessly and without any guilt. Let me not uh, go before the game. We said Jesus came to de destroy the works of the devil. First John 3 8. Go and read that again. Uh, he came to set the captives free. There are many other details that are given in Luke 4 18. Go through that again and you will see it. To bring peace towards men. He came to bring peace towards men. It doesn't mean because he brought the peace that we have the peace. It is us to receive it. It's us to understand it. So that we allow the peace of God to work in us and to be manifest in our lives. As you know, Jesus himself, he was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went around doing good. This is in Acts 10.38. Uh, he went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So when you are with God, and you know that God is for you and not against you, you will go about doing good. The same, the same things that Jesus did here on earth, all that he did, he did it to show us how we are supposed to be walking in this life. We are in him and he is in us. It is the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. We have to have this intimate relationship with God. We have to walk with Him knowing that we are loved. I remember the other time we also reflected on this. We reflected on, and we studied, don't just reflect, I'm just reflecting now on that right now, that we saw that God is so faithful. We saw that God loves you. God loves me. And of course with the sacrifice that He gave of His only begotten Son, that is a true testimony of his love for the world. And he did this so that he could redeem us and buy us back to himself. And this is already accomplished. It is finished. But now we ask ourselves, why is it that if it is finished, why is it that we are not allowing this victory, the finished work, work of the cross to manifest in our everyday work of life? That's why we need to study God's word. We need to get to see what God has for us. We have to search the scriptures. We have to understand. We have to have this revelation. And this is not something that just comes automatically. It doesn't just happen to you and to me just because it is in the Bible. It doesn't just happen just because it is God's will. No. We have to receive it. We have to allow this power to work in us and through us. So it is upon you and me to have this in our hearts. And how do we get it in our hearts? We have to study the word. We have to believe the word. We have to speak the word. And as we, as we speak, as it is written in Romans and what Paul said, that the word is nigh you in your mouth and in your heart then in your heart so it comes through your mouth it is not my mouth it is your mouth it is not the preacher's mouth it is your mouth speak it and when you speak it and you meditate on it then it gets into your heart God will change your heart God loves you and that's what his will is but are we walking in this? are we doing this? so let's continue we know that God God, of course, is love, and God is spirit, and God is light. And when we know this is who God is, and he wants the best for us, then we should allow his power to flow in us. We saw how Adam, the other time, the last week on Tuesday, we saw how Adam was equipped. He was, he was given the dominion, 
he had the spirit, so the image of God, that's the identity of God. He had been given that identity, he was given the dominion, he was given the blessing, God blessed him so that he could be fruitful. That's God's grace. He could be fruitful and also multiply. But unfortunately, what did he do? He gave his authority to, to the enemy by listening to another voice. I know, PPP members, you always hear me say this, that do not listen to another voice. Listen to the voice of God only. Any other voice that comes to deceive you, that person or whoever is bringing that voice might be you being used by the enemy to deceive you so that you don't get to see what God has for you. We need to listen to God's voice and speak what God says. We know Satan is the God of this world. In 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, I read, you can go back again and study this so that we, we save on time. I don't want uh, to extend beyond the time that we have allocated for this. 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, Satan, the Satan who is the God of this world. See that, Satan is the God of this world. He has blinded many minds of those who don't believe. You know, those who are in the world. We all came through that bloodline of Adam, but we have been brought back. Christ came and we have been redeemed. We have been reconciled back again to God. We read that in 2 Corinthians 5, uh, verse 21. And we are, we are not being blamed for any sin at all. So don't see yourself as, sin, as, a, as a sinner. See yourself as righteous, the way God sees you as a believer. For those who don't believe, you are still in that bloodline. Your nature is still that nature of sin. But for a believer, we are not that anymore. So Jesus, when he came here and he paid the price, the last time where we were, we talked about the, uh, the, the, the strong man. And this was in... Uh, this was in Matthew 12, 29. That's where we left off. And it's important now for us to get to understand this. I hope you're going to walk with me. I want us to say this. That Adam, when he disobeyed God, just that, just because he did not agree with God, he never did any of that but just because of disobeying God not listening to his voice and obeying his voice that is where sin came in and death reigned through the whole world up to this day so sin came how? by disobeying God his word, disobeying his word so what is sin? sin is simple it's just being independent. You want to operate independent of God. Anytime you think of being independent from God, then you are allowing sin to reign in your life. Even when you are a believer, it is not just because you're born again that you can't have that. It will come to you. And that's what the enemy wants you to, to do so that you remain in that position. Don't agree to that. Say no to it. Listen to God's voice. So we said uh, that there is this, uh, strong, this is the strong man who came into the world. Let me sip some water. Can you see that? Can you God has already given us the power of choice. So it is for us to choose what we want to do. We have the freedom. We are free moral beings. So with that freedom that we were given, if we do not choose what God has chosen for us to live victoriously, we cannot blame God. We cannot go back against that, that and say that God now is judging us. We cannot go back again and say that it's God who is allowing all these, these uh, disasters to come to our lives. It is not Him. So it is important for us to see that. Where we left off, and it's good to read this scripture again, this is in Matthew 12, 29, as I mentioned earlier, that how do we bind this strong man? We are not going to read the whole, the whole scripture. I'm sure you must have read that. Or how 
this world is a disaster. How can one enter a strong man's house and plunder, mark those words, and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house. Now, for us who have the Spirit of God, we have the authority and we have been given the power in Luke 10, 19, we have authority and we have the power to trample down on serpents and scorpions, anything, and we have been given a guarantee, nothing will by any means hurt us. Nothing. That's a surety. It's a guarantee. So it is good for you to believe that. Don't say that this cannot work. Don't see that, like it is so difficult for this to happen. When you voice that, you are allowing the deception of the enemy because you are not in agreement with God. The same way Adam did, because of listening to another voice, he allowed the enemy and he gave him his authority. He became the God of this world. Adam was the God of this world and he had a very good fellowship with, with God. But look at this today. Sin, his disobedience brought in death. And that's where the fall of man came. Today we fall and we, we actually fail to enjoy God's grace when we listen to another voice. So let's not allow that. We have this. We believe what the word teaches us. Not because we feel like it. Not because it's making sense in our small little brains. But because that is the truth. That is what God has declared. And what he has already done for us, it's final. We cannot change. This is the truth. So purpose to believe it. Digest it. Meditate on it day and night so that it becomes part of you as you're thinking. You'll be thinking on those lines. You'll not be thinking with the thoughts that Adam gave you. There are some of us who are still dwelling there as believers and yet we have the victory. I chose not to go that direction again. I am still learning, yes, and every time I get to see what God sees in me, in Christ Jesus, I meditate on that, I digest it, and it becomes part of me. Now the Holy Spirit is there. He's our teacher. He's our guide. He will lead us into all truth. And when you walk in this truth and take action on it, what God has promised will surely manifest in your lives. Anyway, let's continue. So we know hmm, faith, we said the other time, walk it by love. We know God loves us, as we read the other time. We know we have the Spirit of God, we have His identity, we have His authority, we have His power in us. And we have His faith, not our faith. His faith, but we put our faith in His faith. The God kind of faith. So that what He declares, we know is, is for sure going to take place in our lives. We know He loves us. So His love and faith workers by love, we know He has poured out His love into our hearts. I hope you are remembering that. This is something that has to be part of you. So that even as you are thinking, even as you are facing any challenge in your life, you could be sick wherever you are. You could be struggling financially. You could be going through other kind of difficulties in life. But there is always a way out. God has already done that for us. In Romans 5.17, and this one I will read. For if by the ones one man's offense you know who that one man is Adam for by one man's offense death reigned through the one much more those who receive abundance of grace this is the blessing that Adam was given but he forfeited it and handed it over to to the, to the enemy the authority that he had been, had been given, the abundance and the power that he had been given, he relinquished that and gave it to the enemy. Unfortunately, now we all come through that. But now, thank God for what he did for us in Christ Jesus. That now, much more, those who receive this abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, note that word, of the gift, it is not your working. It is not what you do. It is a gift. And what do you do with a gift? You just receive it. You just receive that gift. So, those who receive these gifts of righteousness will reign in life. It doesn't mean that when you receive this gift of righteousness, 
because the word of God doesn't tell us that because he said we will reign in life this is what Paul wrote in the book of Romans it doesn't mean that we are going to struggle or wait through this life wondering whether I'm going to succeed or not it's a guarantee we will reign in this life through the one Jesus Christ if I have been guaranteed this I want to reign in this life because it's a promise and that cannot be broken it is my responsibility when I know that it is my failure that is making me not reign in life, I will do everything possible to ensure that I get to know what is this that I need to have the understanding of. What knowledge do I need? What do I need to understand so that I can have the wisdom to apply this truth in my life? And I will reign in life. I know right now I'm reigning in life. I'm not allowing the, the enemy to defeat me. I know who, my, who I am my identity in Christ, the power that I have, the authority that I have. And what I speak, I know the enemy cannot defeat me. So it's a guarantee. We will reign in life, not to struggle. So don't allow those kind of thoughts to come into your mind. Wondering whether God is going to come and, uh, and meet my needs. It's, it's already a guarantee. He has already said it. So it's you to believe it so that you receive it. Now, you don't even ask and wondering, uh, don't you know what am I going through? Uh, you don't understand. I have a lot of problems. Yes, I know. I'm not belittling the problems that you're facing. But I'm saying that is not where you're supposed to stand on. Don't focus on those little problems. I mean, I'm calling them little. Because victory, the victory that has been won for us is way beyond the much more when we receive is there for us. That much more is what I want to enjoy. That much more is what we should be enjoying in this life and reigning on in this life. We have already been given it by God's grace. The blessing is already there. So when we have this and we believe this and not going by our feelings, because if we go by our feelings, what does this tell us? We are only operating in the natural. We are only operating in the natural through our senses. This is not about having the sensual, the sensual working in our lives. It is by us being in the spiritual, allowing the spirit of God that is way beyond what we can even think of in our, uh, in our senses. This is supernatural. In Romans 8, 6, to be carnally minded is death. When you're just functioning under that sensual realm, that is being carnal. You're just thinking by what you have and your feelings. It's not going by what God has for you. To be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because, this is Romans 8, 6 to 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. And what is the law of God? This is faith. The faith that, 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 God has, that, that God has, and He has given us this. We read that. We are not going to get into back, back into that again. Nor indeed can it be. Let me read that again. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. So, if the need you try, oh, let me finish. Nor indeed can it be. For if you try to go by your senses in the sensual realm, you will never get to experience that which, which is supernatural. Mm. You will never experience that which is supernatural. So we receive, when we receive Christ and we have his spirit in us, then we have his righteousness, not my righteousness. It is not from what I do, it is what has already been done for me. We have to believe God, dear ones. We have to believe God like Abraham did. He believed God and it was accounted for him as righteousness. So we have to go through the same. It is not automatic. It is your laboring to enter into that rest. You have to work for it. You have to dig into the scriptures. You have to meditate on the scriptures. I will keep on repeating that because majority of us believers, we assume that things will just happen because God is, God is love, God loves me. He has already given us this promise. These promises will just fall on me 
Yeah, by fluke, no, it doesn't work that way. I have seen that it doesn't work that way. So it is our responsibility. Let's take it up upon ourselves to allow this power that we already have. We work this dominion power in us into our lives, into our everyday walk of life. Everything that you do in this life, we are supposed to walk conscious of how righteous we are. Not thinking that now that I've fallen, then God is not going to answer my prayer. Because now you have fallen back again. And you see, now this now is depending on you. It is not depending on what Christ has done for you. That's why it is important to understand righteousness. We are not teaching on that right now. But it's good for you to see it. We know every promise that God has given is a guarantee. It will never fail. You should not doubt that whatsoever. Know that what God has promised must be filled. Now, it is important for us to be taking action. Now we, we, we understand that we already have the love of God. I repeat again, we have His Spirit, so we have His identity. We have He has given us His authority, His power. We have the dominion. Yeah, and these are gifts that we have been given for free. It's not something that we struggle to get. It's already there. If you are a believer, it's already there. But you have to know that you have it. If you don't know it, if you don't believe it, then you can't walk in it. So you have to know it and you have to believe it. I know in our thoughts, there are times when we just try to reason. And tell, and tell, I tell myself at times, I, how can this work? How can this be? No, I tell those thoughts, no. I speak the word. How do I get rid of those thoughts? I get to the word and I speak what the word of God says. Those thoughts are going to disappear. When they come back again, I do the same thing again. I keep on speaking God's word. And I'm sure when we do that, all of us, including myself, I'm not beyond that. I'm also learning and I'm also walking in these truths. And I've seen the victory. And I'm enjoying that victory in my life with my family. And I believe they're also going to continue walking in these truths. God is good. God loves you. So we are equipped. What we are lacking is knowledge. We know in first, uh, in Second Peter 1, uh, 3 to 4, I know we had read this some time back, but let me just read this. I'm not going to expound on it. His divine power has given us, has given to us all things. This is in the New King James Version. He has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. I wish we would get to see this. We read through, but we do not allow what is written here to get into our hearts so that we can act on it and understand what is it that we have been told here. As his divine power has given us, has given to us, sorry, all things that pertain to life and that pertain to life and godliness through knowledge of him, through knowledge of him. So it is not him who brings this to us. We have to study his word. It is knowing him. Knowing God who called us to, uh, who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly. Can you imagine that? Exceedingly great and precious promises. Exceedingly great and precious promises. That through this, through this what? Through these promise, promises, you may, you may be partakers you may be partakers of the divine nature, the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So we can escape the corruption that is in the world through lust, just like Adam did. Adam brought in death out of lust. We lust for other things, and this corruption that is there in the world, we can escape it when we have the knowledge of truth, the word of God. We don't have to experience the same thing that Adam brought to us. Now we can live by what the abundance of grace has brought to our lives and the gift of righteousness. We have to see this so that we reign in life. I'm sure each one of us, who does not want to reign in life? Because we are all struggling, trying to do our best so that we can have the best in life. But we struggle every day, every day, trying through so many means Yet, the avenue has been made clear. It is through Christ Jesus. Have these truths in you. 
you will not struggle again. You will enjoy everything that is there that God has already promised us. We know that the word of God is incorruptible. And the word of God will produce after its own kind. Everything in this life produces after its own kind. When you plant any seed, whether it's maize, whether it is beans, whether it is uh, popo, whether it is mango, everything produces after its own kind. And when I see this, that the word of God is seed and is an corruptible seed and it will produce after its own kind, so it will produce according to what God has said. So I will purpose to get to have this word in my heart so that I be speaking this word. As I'm speaking, I'm sowing those seeds and that seed for sure will produce after its own kind. We know for sure God's DNA is in his word and that cannot be changed by anyone. Nobody can change that. This is power. We should be enjoying every promise that God has given us and we escape this corruption that is in the world. Look at the fear that is still there up to this day. I know people have now gone back again to work, although not all of them. Of course, there will be a new normal that uh, will creep in as we settle down uh, uh, with this uh, COVID and the lockdown and, the, and the, the curfew, all these changes that will come thereafter will affect us. And it is important for us as believers, we should be in the forefront, well, in the forefront, sorry about that, so that we allow the wisdom of God to direct us to do that which is right, that is going to be of benefit and win many into the kingdom of God, so that we may live a life of victory and enjoy every gift that God has given us, that he has given us so freely. That would be a, a, a teaching for another day. But I want us to even to look at uh, David. You know, when one is talking here, uh, you, your mouth actually dries up. Uh, let me sip another. Uh, you can enjoy it with me also. You should be like David. David knew he had to speak what God had said. And he knew that victory was in that. We also need to know that and purpose to do the same thing. That we speak God's word. I want you to go to Psalms 17. Uh, we read verse 3 to 5. Uh, briefly. Uh, I, because of time, I know we are not going to continue so much. But let me just read that. You have tested my heart. You have visited me in the night. You have tried me and have found nothing. I have purpose that my mouth shall not transgress concerning the works of men by the word of your lips whose lips God's what God has spoken I have kept away from the parts of the destroyer the evil one that Adam handed over his authority to David knew that he has kept away the, from the parts of the destroyer by speaking God's word so it's important for us to do the same thing if we don't do it we cannot blame God when we face difficulties, we not blame God. It is our responsibility. God is waiting upon us. Yet, majority of us, we are waiting upon God. Now, change that. Renew your mind towards that. And allow that power of God to work in you and through you by you speaking His word. Uphold, I'm continuing reading the same thing. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Uphold my steps in your paths that my footsteps may not slip. This is awesome. It's important for you to see that. We also know that God has given us and he's an, he has, by his grace, in Ephesians 3.20, let me just read through fast, fast, uh, yeah, so that we can, we can go back and repeat this. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. This is in Ephesians 3.20. So this power is the power that works in us. It is us allowing so that we allow the word of God to work in us by bringing these truths into our belief system and we allow God now to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can even think of or even imagine so it is the power that works in us it is not in God God has already done it, it is in us we have to change the way we think now we were still focusing on uh, uh, that uh, the righteousness and how to bind this strong man. Jesus himself knew who he was. 
of course he had the spirit of God he knew he, he was the beloved of God you remember that he, God said yeah this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased so he took that Adam was told not to eat but he chose to eat by listening to the voice of the enemy but now Jesus here believed what God said and he knew he has to live by every word that comes from the mouth of God we have to say the same thing because Jesus said the same thing he spoke and said it is written it is written are you saying the same thing it is written and you quote and you say what God has said now who is this strong man Satan of course is a strong man and he's the one because he's the, one, he's the God of this world he's the God of this world and I believe if we continue getting to understand this I know our time is running so fast I don't know that I'm going to finish this today <laughs> because of time and I want to be I want to be the person who keeps that time I know it has not been happening in the past but I want to do that so Satan is the God of this world he is a strong man and what is his house as we read in Matthew 12 29 his house is the earth his house is the earth is what was given to him he's the God of this world he's the prince of the air and if he's the prince of the air I know we'll ex I'll expound on this on Tuesday because we have not been able to finalize on this but I want you to see this what is this planter that he had that he received if he's a god of this world how is he reigning in this world he does not want you to prosper he doesn't want you to succeed he wants you to stay in uh, sickness he wants you to experience death because he came to steal kill and destroy but god through christ jesus who came to give us the abundant life he came to bind this strong man and how did he bind this strong man by knowing who he is how righteous he is he was anointed he was baptized with the power of the Holy Spirit and he was anointed he had the power of the Holy Spirit and he knew who he was he, he took his assignment in Luke 4 18 and he went ahead and he was now able to destroy the works of the enemy by just knowing how righteous he is if we know how righteous we are we will also be able to bind this strong man we have the authority we have the power we need to exercise this Jesus did that he didn't have to go and I said that the other time he didn't have to go and do all that we do you know we jump up and down we do a lot of gymnastics and we bind the devil I bind you the devil so I bind you Satan Jesus never did any of that he just knew anywhere he appeared then we had to flee if we can exercise the same thing today and know who we are the identity that we have the power that we have the authority that we have faith will be easy for us to uh, to now speak and know I know you might be asking this question how will this work it's not about how it's about who is in you believing in Christ Jesus and the finished work of the cross righteousness when you know I'll expound on this because time is up I will expound on this so that you see it better righteousness righteousness when you know that you are righteous because that is how Jesus overcame and that's how he was ab able to bind this strong man and to spoil this, this plunder by knowing who he was when you know how righteous you are and the authority that you have when you have the righteousness then your authority is easy becomes easy because you know you are already righteous you don't have any condemnation you don't have any fear you don't approach God with any guilt whatsoever we read some scriptures to say this and when you do that you remember even Cornelius he told Jesus he was a man under authority and he had authority he was speaking and he was whatever he spoke had to be obeyed he told Jesus speak the word only and that would be enough he didn't have to go to his house so for you if you don't know how righteous you are if you don't know the authority that you already have by believing and walking in it then your faith will not work righteousness gives birth to authority 
And when you know that you have the authority, faith is so easy. You don't even have to struggle with it. I'm going to repeat this example as I did uh, some time back. And I will just say this as I finish. Uh, you know, especially PBB members. You know our evangelist, that when she speaks and when she says something and she directs what is to be done, what she says is enough. We have to obey that voice. Even me as a husband, when she declares something, I have to obey. And when she says that she is going to have a particular, maybe let's say for instance, she wants to have, uh, uh, what will I use to say, that uh, she would be interested in buying maybe even for her office. Uh, she would want a, a printer, yeah, a new printer in her office. She would just say, I want a printer, a new printer in my office. Simple. She doesn't even have to go and struggle because she is in authority. She has authority. When she speaks, faith goes to work. And now we exercise all that she has said, we have to do it. Whether we feel like it or we don't. So that authority is the authority that we are supposed to be exercising in our everyday walk of life. We'll expound on this as we continue. So that we see, as we bind this strong man and exercise the, what we already have, this righteousness that we have been given, we have the authority, then faith is easy. We don't have to struggle with it. We struggle with it, why? Because we don't find ourselves worthy. If you know that you have authority, like now evangelist, she knows she has authority in PPP. When she speaks, final. She doesn't have to go and pray and beg God and fast and do all, all those things and cry out and do all these things so that what she has said will be done. She just rests. This is what you're supposed to be doing in this life. Binding this trauma that was already bound. The battle is won for us is to have this understanding and this knowledge and walk in this truth. I know you're there. You still have so many questions. I used to have the same kind of questions. But when I purposed and I said, I want to know these truths and I want to walk in this victory. I want to enjoy all these promises that God has given us. Everything changed. I re continued renewing my mind because this is a continuous process. I will continue doing so until when Jesus comes back or when I'm taken back home. But when I'm here on, on earth in this life, I have to purpose to study and enjoy this victory. You are there. A good at the mic only. Thanks for your patience. I know you are there. And probably you would also want to receive this power in you. You have to receive Christ as your Savior. You have to believe in Him and allow Him into your heart by believing that He died and He rose again. That is you who is not a believer. You can receive Christ into your heart. By just saying and speaking from your mouth and saying this, Lord, I've heard your word and I believe that you died and rose again. And I receive you into my heart. And I trust and I know since all sins have been forgiven, past, present and future, I know also my sins are forgiven. And I will enjoy that which you already have for me. And you have already now made me righteous. As you are, so am I now. Now it's your responsibility. If you have said that and you have spoken those words, now it's your responsibility to get now to study God's word. Never ever give up. Put that in your heart. Meditate on that and say, I will never ever give up. I will continue studying God's word and I want to understand and have this wisdom so that I may apply it into my everyday work of life. Thank you so much for your time. God loves you. God wants the best for you. And we are going to continue with this study next week uh, on Tuesday and I know that you have already received that and as a believer it is our responsibility it, we have been given this 
uh, this um, responsibility. It is our task. We have been commanded to go uh, yeah, and, uh, and make disciples. We can do that as believers. So, thank you so much for that. It is my prayer that you have received something. It is not important for us to, and I repeat this again, that to have so much, yet we don't digest that and walk in that truth. I know this is doable because I've gone through it and it is working in my life. For you, if you are still struggling and you are a believer, ask yourself, why is it that you're still struggling? What do you need to change? Get into that. Father, I thank you for your love and abundant grace. Thank you for all that, uh, Lord, you have spoken to, including myself. I believe that, Lord, we are going to continue focusing on you and hearing your voice and obeying your voice and acting upon that which you have already done for us in Christ Jesus. We thank you and we give you all the adoration because you are good God. We honor you. We will submit to you and the enemy has nothing but to flee from us. We give you praise. We give you the adoration in Jesus' name. Thank you, PPP members, for all that you have already uh, done, wherever you are. I thank God for you. We love you and we want the best for you. I know a time is coming when we are going to get back again to church, but we'll continue even with these forums so that we uh, so that we can continue study, studying the word of God together. I might not be perfect, yes, nobody's perfect in this world, in this world, but we can walk together in this and change will come into your life. God bless you. See you next week on Tuesday. Bye for now. Thank you. Hallelujah. You are blessed. Thank you, Jesus. We 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 thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. Oh, we adore you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. We adore. Get out.